you know, you hear when you read about it, it's it's, you know, women, too, are it's, it's just incredible. So you don't really have uh, any large group uh, of males saying, you know, we need to put more energy in male health research. And that's also why the MRA, um, you know, men's rights advocacy is, is just kind of ultimately a waste of time. Now, people aren't going to like hearing that, but I don't care. Because men men don't don't support themselves in, in that in that sense. They have no sense of consol- uh, solidarity, and they don't see themselves as as being disadvantaged in any way. It's just you know that's what as a male you're disposable. You're there to serve, as Barbarossa said once. So that's why there's no energy, I think, behind uh, something like uh, something that would be conceivably very easy to do a male pill. There's no energy behind it. There's no desire for it. Um, this is the dream of maybe a few men going their own way and, uh, and the odd man-woman myth. But uh, by and large, by and large, men aren't uh, interested in it. And, and even if they were, I mean, I do think ultimately the numbers and the money would talk. And at some point in time, by the way, I'm going to be kind of, uh, this will transition to the next part of the video because I'm approaching my end time-wise. At some point in time, uh, let's say it were to happen, uh, there would be, of course, massive opposition to it. And women don't want to relinquish control of their reproductive uh, primacy, their hegemony, if you will, their reproductive hegemony. That's not going to happen. And if you and 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 even within the the manosphere, I don't even like that term, but even within male circles, I mean, talking about when men want reproductive control too, then, you know, you're just like the feminist, you're like this, you're like that, it's collectivist, all this stupid shit that's just, that's an eternal blockade in uh, in trying to gain access to it. I mean, uh, far more, far more than any sort of government reform, this would be the, the, in theory, if men were actually behind it, the, the real deal breaker taking control of your own reproductive fate, as it were. But, 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 there's no energy behind this. This is the point I'm trying to make. Men have internalized their disposability such that there's there's no energy, there's no elan to, to push for something like a male pill, let alone for something like an artificial womb. I do believe the artificial womb is going to come. Um, but... These researchers, the Japanese professor and the Chinese doctor at Cornell, they're not doing it for the sake of men. They're doing it for the sake of women. This is for to make women's lives easier, not for men. So that's the problem I see. That even, even, even if uh, artificial womb technology is developed, uh, when rather, but in the course of, say, the next two or three decades, even, just that's being generous, it's going to be developed and, and it's being developed for the sake of women. And rest assured, once it's out there, women, or particularly feminists, capital F feminists, will, will rush to uh, take hold of it with a vice-like grip. They're not going to let uh, men have access to this technology. You know, some on, on grounds of potential abuse or some crap like that, likely. And men have no interest in it. Like I said, the, the artificial womb is being developed for women, not for men. And, and like I said, as, as since men have no identity as, as a male, uh, per, per se, men have no uh, collective identity, which is a good thing and, and not a good thing in a lot of ways. And as me, and men, by and large, have internalized disposability, they don't advocate for things like that. Uh, that's why I don't not nearly as many men vote as women. Uh, men are just there to serve. That's what men do. That's that's not going to ever change, probably. You know, that's why most MRAs would be happy, like the guy cited, just to you know get rewarded for the disposability. I've said many times that uh, <laughs> draft horse pulling the cart. Well, and this is the ultimate blockade to artificial womb technology. And the male pill and all of this. The men are just not interested in it. But they have to be. Because 
as I said, rest assured, artificial womb technology is being developed, it's being worked on, and it's being worked on for the sake of women. And even though it potentially could completely free men from uh, their obligations to women, feminists will will take control of it right off the bat. They will get, they will rush to it and take control of it, and then impose so many legal restrictions that it just won't even be a viable option. Call me a cynic, but men men don't champion their own cause. They're not inter interested in that. They never have been. They champion the cause of women and society. Society being, by and large, women. Men are servants. You exist to serve as a man. And with that kind of perspective, um, I think it's quite obvious and apparent why uh, something like the male birth control pill uh, is just not something that's on the market. Despite, as I said, male reproductive physiology being several leagues less complex than female uh, reproductive physiology for the simple reason that you know, women have to give birth. And we don't, but we don't see a pill. It would be pretty simple, relatively speaking. So that's the problem. Uh, the, the artificial womb will come, but even if it does those few men who want to take advantage of it probably won't be able to, and most men will just ignore it. Men are perfectly content letting women just take control of the reins. I mean, that's what you do as a servant. That's why men have the servant mentality. They let women, I mean, sometimes they direct them. Sometimes it's dressed up in this idea as the head of the household, but the head of the household just means you're, uh, you're acting in service to the woman ultimately. Um, the the woman being demure and, and meek and and dominated, you're still you still have to provide for her, you still have to do all these things for her. So that's in large part an illusion. We've talked about this so many times, but still, this is the biggest obstacle. Men are the biggest obstacle to advance reproductive technology. It won't be the feminists who are the biggest obstacle. It's a question of numbers. It's always a, a numbers a numbers game. I've said it before to un un unrelated issues. I mean, let's look at American foreign policy. And I don't want to go off on a tangent. Um, my perspective is, is it sucks. We don't need to be involved in all these wars. We don't need a satellite empire. It's, un it's counterproductive, and particular, particularly in light of um, uh, our uh, fiscal problems. 20,000 people march on Washington. It's not going to make a difference. 20 million might. If 250 million people march on Washington, there's going to be a fucking... We might be actually start pulling fucking troops out of uh, Afghanistan, Iraq. Uh, we might be cutting down, down the bases in South Korea and Japan and all over the world. It's a numbers game, but men don't get behind that. I'm getting back to the reproductive aspect, uh, technology uh, t discussion. Men don't get behind that, you see. This is the biggest obstacle, the internalized disposability that men feel. And the lack of identity as a male and the, and the belief and the internalized identity as, as a servant to the rest. Men exist to serve. So even though I, I, I'm, I'm certainly an advocate of advanced reproductive technology and I think the artificial womb is a step in the right direction and it's being worked on it's being done for the sake of women it's not being done for the sake of men it's being done solely with women in mind same reason same reason there is no male pill even though the male pill as i said is infinitely more uh reali realizable uh can be realized far more easily than the, the female birth control pill, and yet that's been around for decades, and there's nothing of the sort. I mean, we're, like I said, <laughs> you're limited to syringes, if you really want to go that route, uh, vasectomy, invasive surgical procedure, or condoms that break, or abstinence. So, this is the biggest problem, and this is why I've said before, men won't change. Men not only exist to serve, they believe they exist to serve. You 
as a man exists to serve. Now, you can reject that role, of course, on an individual level, but until there's momentum and momentum built up by a consolidated, a consolidated interest in male interest, that will not happen. You know, all these the reproductive technologies, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to it's not going to happen for the sake of men. It's going to happen for the sake of women. And because of that, it's women who are going to take control of it. So even though artificial womb technology will be, in theory, ultimately liberating to men, I doubt men are going to even be allowed access to it. Never mind the fact that, you know, there are these other issues like male mother need and males incessant need for female companionship and all these other things. Men are fucked. I hate to say it. Men are fucked until there's some sort of collective awakening amongst men. And uh, given that MGTOW represents some, you know, ten thousand, ten thousandth or hundred thousandth of a of a percentage of, of one percentage a point of of a lot of uh, percentages behind a lot of zeros uh, after a decimal point, um, that's unlikely to happen. I hate to be the bearer of grim tidings, but that's the way it seems. Women have an interest in this. Fem they, they, the, the feminists, do capital F feminists, have an interest in this. But men, by and large, uh, don't. Because, and the, the, you know, the proof is in the pudding. There is no male birth control pill, even though it's much, easily, e much more easily conceived and easier to conceive than a female birth control pill. Because men don't push for it. No numbers, no interest. Men are servants. They exist to serve. They exist to do what they're told. It's always been that way. So, I apologize for the uh, cynicism, but uh, that's how I see things. And uh, how I see uh, the whole issue of artificial uh, reproductive technology. Even though I'm definitely a strong advocate for it. I just don't see men going for it. Either, like I said, for a variety of reasons, you know, weird, it's unnatural, or we'll just let women take care of that anyway. Men just don't do it. Until we've gotten rid, collectively speaking, of an internalized disposability and um, internalized, uh, internalized perception as a servant to the rest of the world, uh, this technology, once it comes, will be in the service of women, not men, rest assured. It will require a fundamental, fundamental and complete shift of mentality and psychology on the part of men that, quite frankly, I don't see coming. No, that's the way I see it. Anyway, take care.